We've chatted about how to graph linear data and how to use a best fit line to analyze this set of data. But what if your data isn't linear? In this tutorial, we'll look at a non-linear example where we can in fact linearize the data so that we can do a best fit line and determine the slope. Consider the D versus T data for a rock that's been dropped off the edge of a cliff. We end up with the following set of data. Can we use the data set to graphically determine the acceleration involved? Let's give it a try. Our first step would be to graph the data to look for a pattern, which is a great way to start any data analysis problem. We draw our axis, and each second we took a distance measurement. So time is the independent variable on the horizontal axis, and the resulting displacement, that would be the dependent variable on the vertical axis. And our plotted data looks like this. So we look at our data and we can see that it's definitely not linear. And thinking back to our kinematics, if acceleration is zero, we know that d and t are related by the equation d equals vt, a nice linear equation. But in this case, we have gravity. So acceleration is not zero. And we know that when we have acceleration, d equals vt isn't a valid equation. And we must resort to a more general equation. d equals v naught t plus one half a t squared would work well. In this case, it's dropped, so there's no initial velocity, and so v naught is zero, and our equation becomes d equals one half a t squared. And this explains why we're not getting a linear graph. The relationship between d and t is not linear. Instead, the relationship is squared. Therefore, to make a nice linear graph, we should be graphing with t squared on the horizontal axis. Now we have a linear equation. y equals mx plus b, and instead of the y, we have d. And instead of the x, we could have t squared. So we make a new column for our data, and we call it time squared. For the data in this column, we just square each one of our original times. And with our new set of data for our x-axis, let's reproduce the graph. Our horizontal axis is now time squared. Redoing our scale to cover the new x values, and our vertical axis is still d, same scale. So now we can plot our data. And plotting our new data, and voila, it's linear. This is linearizing our data. Taking nonlinear data and recognizing a pattern that's nonlinear and adjusting one of the variables to make it a linear relationship and then regraphing. Once linear, it's easy to determine the slope. We can determine our rise here and a run like this, and we divide them to determine our slope just like before. Once we have our slope, we have to refer back to our relationship to confirm what the slope really means at this point. In this case, we can see that the slope, or m, is in fact one half a. So we can multiply both sides by two and arrive at a final answer for our a, or acceleration. And to confirm our answer, we should always be aware of the units. One criteria for any answer we come up with is that the units are appropriate. So the slope of our graph is rise over run, where rise is in meters, referring to the title on the y-axis, and the run is in seconds squared, per our new x-axis. So we end up with a resulting unit for slope of meters over seconds squared, exactly the units we'd expect for acceleration. So perfect. To review, in this tutorial, we determined that if you end up with nonlinear data, you should take time to reconsider the situation. Do you know an equation that represents the type of data that you're graphing? If so, can you rearrange this equation to look like a linear equation by changing what we consider to be either the x or y variables? And if so, give it a try and see what the data looks like. 
If it forms a line, you've chosen an appropriate relationship, and the data analysis has just gotten a lot easier. Now you know how to linearize your data.